Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen, and in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. I'm Pastor Sam and I'm so happy that you join me today. We're about to enter into the happiest time of the year for believers, the time when Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. It was Paul the Apostle who said, if Christ is not risen, our faith is in vain. And today on the program, I'm sharing a message with you that I call, Who is This? Do you really know him? Have you really met him? I want you to open your heart wide today and allow the Lord to minister to you as I share this very special, relevant word from the Lord. And I believe it will change your life forever for the better. In fact, I want you to have the entire message. If you'll just simply call me now at 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. I'll send to you a CD of the message, Who Is This? Let's get ready now and go into that service. The power of God is at work and God is ministering and I'm preaching on the subject, Who Is This? I can picture Jesus as he makes his way down that long, winding Jericho road into Jerusalem and ultimately into the temple, <clears throat> and he's riding a burrow. Now, <laughs> why, first of all? Well, it was prophesied that he would ride a burrow into Jerusalem on this occasion. And, of course, it's a sign of peace and a sign of humility. So the meek and lowly Savior is riding a burrow. He is the Prince of Peace. And yet multitudes of Jews followed crying, Hosanna, which means save us now. You see, sometimes we become impatient with God. But make no mistake about it, God's timing is impeccable. And they had in mind that Christ would lead them out from under the tyranny of the Roman Empire and establish the golden age of Israel where Israel would occupy a place of world prominence. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, they called him the son of David. Do you see where they're going with this? David's the king. And they said, we want you to be our king. They forgot that 750 years before Christ was born in Bethlehem's manger, the prophet Isaiah said, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see, the Son of God had to become the Son of Man so that sons of men could become sons of God. And so the crowd shouts, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us now. Jesus is about to become the ransom for sin. In fact, if you'll follow that chapter and the next chapter, Jesus talks about giving his life a ransom for many. But they said, save us and do it now. Usher in some kind of a new age change everything. We're tired of living under the oppression of the Roman government. But just to show you how confused they are, when the dust settles, the whole city asks, what do they ask? Who is this? Who is this? Well, I want to use three titles that are ascribed to Christ to help you identify him today. Now, number one, he is the Son of God. You believe that? Say amen. amen. 
I'll just go ahead and tell you what they are so you can write them down. He's the Son of God. He is the Lamb of God. And He is the Word of God. You know, the golden text of the New Testament is John 3, 16. Why don't you say it with me, everybody? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus attested to the fact that he was the Son of the Father. He said, therefore doth my Father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Facing the cross, he told his disciples, Thinkest thou that I cannot therefore now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels. It was Simon Peter who confessed, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Even the Roman soldier who thrust a spear into the side of Jesus said, Truly, this was the Son of God of God. He proved his identity. You remember when uh, Lucifer, uh, who became Satan, tempted Jesus in the wilderness? And this is what he said to him. He asked, if you are the Son of God. You see that? If you are the Son of God. And how did Jesus respond? It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, suspended between heaven and earth, as if he were too good for the earth and yet not good enough for heaven, as he became the sin substitute for all men of all ages throughout all of time and canceled the sin debt and died for us so that we could have eternal life, his uh, tormentors shouted, If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. And they remarked, he saved others, but he cannot save himself. Yes, right. Truer words have never been spoken. Jesus could not have saved himself and saved us, but he offered his life for us so that we could have eternal life. Somebody say praise God. Praise God. Now, I want you to see this because I, I love this. You say, I, I believe in the resurrection. I believe that Jesus was raised on the, three, uh, on the third day. What did Paul say about the resurrection? He said, and he was declared to be, get this now, and he was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Holy Spirit by the resurrection from the dead. When Jesus was raised from the dead on the third day, he walked out of the tomb and he said, I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and hell and God in heaven says, this is my son, hallelujah. Glory to God. And it would seem to me from reading the scriptures that the requisite for salvation is to believe that Jesus is the son of God. John chapter 20 and verse 31, after John had written everything that he wrote in the gospel of John, he said, but these were written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Turn to your neighbor and say to them, neighbor, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus. Who is this? Well, I believe that not only is he the son of God, but I believe that he is the lamb of God. Jesus goes to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. You know what Passover is? Long time ago, when God's children were in bondage, they lived in a land of slavery and servitude, and God was about to set them free. He sent a tongue-tied holiness preacher by the name of Moses. And Moses showed up with a walking stick and conquered the mightiest army in the history of the world. And he said, God has sent me. What a man. God sent me. I have a message from God. And Pharaoh said, I don't even know who God is. He said, well, you're about to get better acquainted with him. I can tell you that right now. And through a series of miracles and wonders and signs, finally, God delivers the children of Israel. But just before they made their exodus, God said, I've got one last thing I want to do. I want every family to select a spotless lamb. Everybody say a lamb. Amen. And I want you to take that lamb and sacrifice it, drain its blood into a basin, then have the family stand in the entrance of the home and take hyssop 
and sprinkle the blood over the entrance. Now picture this. There they are standing there, mom, dad, and the kids. You know, they're standing there in the house and they say, okay, we've got to do this because God commanded us to do it. We don't quite understand this, what this is all about, but we've got to take the blood of that spotless lamb and we've got to sprinkle it over the entrance of the house. And now they have done what God required of them and at midnight, God dispatched the death angel to pass through every uh, neighborhood and wherever the, oh, I'm about to shout of what I'm getting ready to say. Wherever the blood of the lamb had been applied, they were protected. Oh, hallelujah. I just came by to let you know I'm covered by the blood of a lamb. Hallelujah. All the lambs that were slain in the tabernacle and in the temple and during that week of Passover, a quarter of a million, 250,000 lambs would be slain in the temple. All those lambs were a type or a shadow of the Lamb of God. When John the Baptist saw him walking the sandy shores of the Sea of Galilee, he declared, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Jesus gave his life and offered his blood so that we could have eternal life. How do you know that? Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? See, in the Old Testament, when they sprinkled the blood on the mercy seat, the high priest would come out and he'd say, your sins have been atoned for a year. And he would sit down and all the shout would come up out of the uh, uh, children of Israel. They praised God because they knew that God had allowed that blood of that lamb to atone for their sins. But this time, when Jesus goes behind the curtain, he offers his own blood, and now not only are we free from our sins, and God does not judge us because we've been judged with Christ, and now we are free from condemnation. God has con uh, done more than just forgive us. He has delivered us from our guilt. Hallelujah. I have a clear conscience. I can go to sleep now, praise God. Hallelujah. You know, a lot of people today are talking about, well, I don't have any rest. So they'll go out and buy a shirt of rest mattress. What's that? What's that one, the dual controls? What's that called? Sleep number bed. Anybody got one of those? Does it work? <laughs> you know, and then there's somebody else say, well, you know what I do is I count sheep. I say, don't count sheep. Talk to the shepherd. Amen. But people, they have trouble sometimes sleeping because of their mattress or they have trouble because of, you know, they just, uh, they're, they're all mixed up and can't sleep. And I understand that. But let me tell you, if it's because that you're under condemnation or because that you are guilty, let me tell you what you can do. You can come to Jesus today and because of what he did on Calvary, you can walk out of here knowing that you have been washed and cleansed and that your sins are gone. You can quote uh, Romans 5 and 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You can quote Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. You can quote Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith in that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Whom the Son hath set free, he is free indeed. Hallelujah. Because of the blood of the Lamb. Throughout the book of Revelation, Christ is known as the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. The saved of all the ages one day with the voice of Adam's race will cry, Worthy is the Lamb, for thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. That washed me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And because we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, our names have been written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful to know your name is written down in heaven? Somebody say, praise God. Point at your neighbor again and say, he is the Lamb of God. Now, here's the third one. Are you ready for this? 
He is the Word of God. Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 13. And I saw heaven open, and I saw a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and his name was, and he is called the Word of God. John chapter 1, verse 1. Verse 1, in the beginning, and the following verses, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. And verse 14 said, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the Word. Now, now, what does that mean? If you go into the Old Testament, you'll find all these wonderful names. I, this morning I was reading Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. said, and God said, and the word for God is Elohim, and God said, let us make man in our own image. The word Elohim means plural of majesty. So God said, let us make man in our own image. So God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit said, let us make man. And he made us in his image, spirit, soul, and body. Then I read where his name is El Elyon, it means possessor of heaven and earth and the one who delivers our enemies into our hands. I read where he called himself El Shaddai. I'm the all-sufficient God. I'm the God who's more than enough. I read where he called himself Adonai. You know what that means? Master. When, 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 when Saul of Tarsus was on his way uh, to persecute the church, Jesus stepped in the middle of the road and bam, knocked him off his horse and uh, rolled him in the dust and he stood up. He said, Master. He said, Adonai, who are you? He is our master. There's another name. Everybody knows the name Yahweh, but you know that name was so holy that Jews wouldn't speak it and they wouldn't write it. If you see it anywhere, it's usually it's like Y-H-V-H and, and it means Yahweh, Yahweh, but nobody will say it because it's too holy for a man to say. And then they took Adonai and Yahweh and put them together and came up with Jehovah, which means the Lord God Almighty. And then you've got Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees our needs and provides for them. And Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. And Jehovah Makedesh, the God who sanctifies us. You've got Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner, our sign of conquest, our ultimate assurance of victory. You've got Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God Almighty who heals us and makes our bitter experiences sweet. You've got Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd, and he's leading leading and guiding us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You've got Jehovah Shalom, the Lord God, our peace. You've got Jehovah Shema, and I love this one. It's the God who is there. When's he there? He's always there. If you're up, down, in, out, sick, well, rich, poor, he's always there, always by your side. Our God is there. But when you get through with all these wonderful names, Psalm 138 and verse 2 says he has magnified, listen, he has magnified his word above all his name. No wonder Paul said, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I'm about to shout up here today. Hallelujah. Somebody give him the praise and honor he deserves in this house. He's the Word. It's time for us to pray now. I want you to believe God with me. Could I lead you in a prayer? I believe when I pray this prayer, if you pray it behind me, that God will hear you and he will answer you and your life will be changed. So sincerely, pray with me right now. Pray like this, dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Forgive me for all of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Dear Jesus, be the Lord of my life. I want to serve you and follow you because you died to save me and you were raised from the dead and you live forever and soon you'll come back. I want to be ready by your help and grace. Meet every need in my life, Heavenly Father, according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. For it's in his name I pray and amen. Hallelujah. 
I believe God heard that prayer, and I want to hear from you. Call me now at 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. And when you call, tell me about what God has done in your life and request the message, Who is this? I'll send it to you on a CD. You'll love it. Pass it along to somebody and bless them, would you please? No charge. Just call me at 804 744 8881. Now, Resurrection Sunday is coming. Where are you going to church? You need to get your whole family into church. And not just on Easter Sunday, but all during the year. Jesus needs to be the Lord of your life and the Lord of your home, your family. So I want to encourage you to join us here at Victory Tabernacle. Service begins at 10 o'clock. Two full hours of praise and worship ministry from the Word and always a time together in His presence around the altar. Don't forget that the last Sunday in every month is our Miracle Sunday, which means we have an additional service at 6 p.m. And by the way, all of our services now, and that includes our midweek service that I'll tell you about in just a moment, but all of our services are live streamed over Ustream and Facebook. So go to our website for more information. That's victorytab.org. Wednesday night, you'll find us here in our Family Enrichment Night service where we have something special for every age group and every member of the family. It's fun, exciting, and it's relevant. We have Royal Rangers for the boys, Missionettes for the girls, a dynamic youth program for teens, a ministry to college and career age young people. I'm teaching in the main sanctuary, and we have a ministry to our Hispanic congregation going on in the chapel. So we have something for everybody. We start at 7 at 830. We're walking out the door, so be sure to join us. And oh, by the way, when you go to our website, victorytab.org, check out our 24-hour radio internet network called Victory Battle Cry. And uh, I know you'll be glad you did. Again, for that gift, call us now at 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. Until we're together again, just like this around the Word of God, this is Pastor Sam reminding you that here at Victory Tabernacle, faith brings a victory and miracles still happen.
got to meet Mark and Luke and Timothy and Paul and James and Peter. I said, that's good. <laughs> but I said, oh, you got to understand, I want to, I want to. 